This video will teach you everything you need to know to get started with Grease Pencil Animation in Blender. Let's get right into it. Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. In today's tutorial we'll be taking this Hollow Knight sketch and turning it into a layered 3D grease pencil animation in Blender. This video will be useful for beginners and those looking to refresh their memory, but if you're completely unfamiliar with Blender, just try to follow along and do your best, and leave any questions in the comments. You can draw your sketch directly in Blender, but I've sketched mine ahead of time to help keep this tutorial as concise as possible. You can download my sketch file if you want to follow along exactly with this tutorial, the link to the sketch is in the description. We'll first go through setting up our scene with the sketches, then take a look at drawing with grease pencil using part of the background as an example. Then we'll animate the characters and finally go through setting up the render. I do recommend a graphics tablet for this tutorial, but you can draw with a mouse, it is just much harder. I've left a link in the description to some good entry level tablets in case you're interested, but don't let it put you off. Final thing, the keys I'm pressing will be shown on screen, but I also try to call them out as I use them. Also, this is just one way to work with the grease pencil tool, so if you do like this video, let me know in the comments below and we can do more. Alright, let's jump right into it. All right, so first things first, we need to get our sketches into Blender. I'm just gonna select everything in my scene and press delete to get rid of it all. Then holding alt and middle mouse button, we're gonna to flick to the left to get to front orthographic view. This is so that when we shift a image reference, our sketch layers, which we will navigate to now, they will be aligned to the front orthographic view, which is where we'll be working in this animation. So we'll just repeat that process for all of our layers. Shift a image reference and choose the background layer. So we now have all eight of our reference layers. Let's shift A, a new camera. And the reason we deleted the first camera and then added in a new one here is so that it's aligned automatically to the front or the graphic view, which saves us a bit of time. I'm gonna grab all of my layers and I'm just gonna press G and Y to move them back in Y space, like so. And we're gonna push them just all the way back until we think our background is gonna be really far away from our camera. Then let's go up to the top left of our layout window here until we get a crosshair icon and we're gonna drag that out so that we've got two workspaces. And in this left workspace here, we're gonna press numpad zero or click this camera icon to look through our camera. From there, we're gonna take our first image that we imported, which was our background plane here. And we're just gonna scale that up with S until it's slightly larger than our camera. Uh, if this gets a bit distracting, you can go and select your camera here, go down to the camera options and under viewport display, change passport two to one, which will completely black out anything uh, that you don't want to see outside of the camera's frame. Then we're gonna select the rest of our layers and we're just gonna start bringing them forward in Y space so they are in front of our background and we're just going to position these roughly where we think we want them to be. So for example, this cave is going to be quite far away from the background. So we want that to come say about, let's do about halfway and we'll scale that up until it's just filling the frame. Then we'll select our next reference image, bring that ahead. Now the knight here is going to be standing in the very mouth of the cave. So we probably want that to be literally just in front of our cave layer here. And then we'll scale that up until it's just filling the frame. Doesn't have to be perfect, of course, because these are all just sketches. We'll do the same thing with Hornet. We'll bring her all the way out, but we want Hornet to be standing pretty much level with the knight. So we'll grab the Hornet reference image and we'll shift click the knight. Then we'll press S, Y, and zero to zero out their position on the Y axis, okay? That puts them right next to each other. So when we move them, they're now moving at the same depth. So we'll put them just in front of the cave and we'll grab our knight and we'll scale Sorry, we'll grab Hornet and we'll scale her up to be the same size as the Knight. The next layer is these plants. We want these to be behind our characters by quite a way. So let's pop them somewhere like here and we'll scale those up until they fill the frame too. After that is our rock cave floor. So we want that in front. Let's put that way in front, somewhere like this. And for this one, we may have to scale down rather than up so that it fills the frame nicely. Same for our rock ceiling here. Let's push that all the way closer towards the camera lens. That looks pretty good to me. We'll scale that one down. And we'll do the final thing for our very front layers here. We'll push that. Let's actually push our camera back a bit so that all fits. And we can select everything except that first layer, which we haven't adjusted yet. And we can then scale those and you'll see they'll all scale proportionately until they fit once again back in your frame. Let's bring this way up close to the camera lens and scale it down 
so that it fits as well. So as you can see, we have now reconstructed that original drawing and rough scale. But if we were now to select our camera and press G and Y to move it in Y space, you can see that we can now push through our layers in 3D space and they move according to their depth, uh, according to the camera. So this is the basics of this scene. Now, I'm gonna leave them like that for now, but you can always come back and tweak them later on. It really doesn't matter. You just need to kind of set up the frame roughly so that you know you're happy with it. With that done, it is best at this point to do a little bit of housekeeping. We're going to create a grease pencil object, which is what you can think of as like a closed environment for doing a piece of animation. We're gonna create a grease pencil object per reference image that we have here so that we can animate and move all individually and sort of keep it organized in our brain. So I'm going to select our first reference image here, then press shift S and move the 3D cursor to this selected image origin point. If we then press Shift A and add in a new grease pencil blank, that's going to come in at the origin point of the 3D cursor. So we can then shift click to select both the grease pencil object and our reference image, press M to move them to a new collection, and we'll just call this one foreground. Okay, that pops it in its own collection. And we're just gonna do that for each of these other frames as well, these other reference images. So one more and then I'll speed through the rest. You select your image, you press Shift S, cursor to selected, Shift A, new grease pencil blank, Shift click the image so you've got both of them selected, press M, new collection, and name it something relevant, in this case, foreground two. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the same thing to the rest of these, we'll speed through that. Okay, so we now have each of these reference images with a grease pencil object in its own collection. I'm just going to go up to the top left of this layout window here and drag over until we highlight the left one and release to merge those windows again. With that setup done, it's now time to start getting used to drawing with the grease pencil. We'll start off by drawing one of our layers that doesn't have any animation on it. Then once you're used to working with the grease pencil, we'll go into animating one of our characters. So let's start with something simple. If we select this reference image here, this should be a good place to start because there's only a few layers to be working with. So I'm going to twirl down all of my collections here and I'm going to hide everything except the foreground two collection, which is the one that we're gonna be working with, just so that it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Then we're gonna press this plus icon at the top of the screen and add in a new 2D animation workspace. And as you can see, that makes you automatically look through the camera. If you press this camera icon, turn it on and off, you can see that you're looking through the camera in the camera's perspective or when you turn it off, front orthographic view, which is fantastic. If you ever accidentally come out of front orthographic by middle clicking, of course, you can just press numpad one to go back into front orthographic or hold alt and then flick the middle mouse until you find the front orthographic again. I'm gonna stay in front orthographic, not looking through the camera. If your workspace is blindingly white, that is because you are looking in solid mode. So please be aware that obviously wireframe, solid material preview and render preview do apply to this workspace. I'm going to be working in material preview mode for the foreseeable in here. Right, let's get started then. I'm gonna select my reference image. I'm gonna go down to my reference image properties and just twirl down the opacity so that it is a little bit less in your face. <laughs> then I'm going to select my grease pencil object here and I'm going to tab into drawing mode. To do that, you can drop down this menu here and choose draw mode, or you can press the shortcut control tab and you can look through a few of these modes here. I'm just gonna choose draw mode. There are a few important things to know about working with grease pencil. The first off, your toolbar up here determines what your brush strokes are going to look like. Your toolbar down the left are going to be your separate tools, you know, brush, eraser, paint fill, etc., And your color management, material properties, layer properties are all over here on the right hand side. So I'm gonna start by selecting my pen tool from this drop down menu. And as you can see, it's already created for us a black material that we're gonna be using. You can flip between standard materials, which work in a similar way to normal blender materials, and something called color attributes, which are essentially a way to paint on top of a normal material. We may get to those later, but for now, we're gonna be starting work with just normal materials. So we'll come back to those when they become applicable. The radius of your brush, can be affected with this slider here. So if you can see, if you just start drawing, we've got a pretty solid brush and we can turn that up and down here or you can press the shortcut F to do so as well. And this little icon will choose whether or not your uh, graphics tablet's pressure sensitivity will affect the size. Same thing that happens for strength. You can basically think of that as opacity and the pressure sensitivity there. And you have butt and round caps for your brush as well few things under advanced, you may want to turn up your active smooth if you've got a bit of a wobbly hand like me, um, as well as the hardness of your brush and things like that can all be affected there. Stroke post processing, I recommend leaving alone because it can get quite hardware intensive, but we may play with these randomized settings a little bit later on as well. So we'll come back to those. Apart from that, we're just gonna jump right into it. 
So down here in your uh, layers palette, in your object data properties, you'll see a layer palette here. And you can see we just have something called GP layer for grease pencil layer. Your grease pencil layers work like 2D layers in Photoshop. So essentially a layer on top of another layer here will display on top like in any drawing software. You also have your material properties panel here. Uh, the materials you make will be unique to grease pencil. So you can see here, I have a black material that has a stroke and no fill. And when I'm drawing, I just get a black line. If I were to add another material here, and we'll call this one just test, you can see that I can add a fill to my new material. Let's make it bright red. And I can start drawing and my shapes will now have a red fill. You can, however, see that it is not the same color here as it is here. And that's because back in our layer properties, you can see that this layer has used lights checked on. So any 3D lights in the scene are affecting the color of our layers. You can turn that off if you'd like to. I'm going to leave it off for now, but we're going to come back to it and turn them on later on. We'll get more into this as we start using and drawing. But for now, that's pretty much all you need to know to actually get started. I want to quickly get rid of everything that I've drawn here. So first thing I'm going to do is just delete this layer. First of all, just get rid of it all. And then on this original layer here, I'm just gonna rename this to rocks and I'm going to control tab into edit mode. Now you can see here that the strokes we've drawn are actually vertexes in the same way that your 3D models have vertexes. So if I press A to select them all and then X to delete them and choose points, we can clear that really quickly. You can also, if you go to draw mode, tab into edit mode and select individual points and move them around as you would in 3D space. Additionally, you can tab into sculpt mode and by adjusting the size of your brush with F, you can actually neaten up your line work by pushing and pulling your lines around until you're happy. This can be quite useful if you wanna just quickly adjust or neaten your line work, but I mostly work in draw mode. And then I use edit mode to select and delete things that I don't want. You do also have, of course, your eraser tool that you can use to erase and a paint bucket tool that you can use to fill things. We'll get to that as we draw them. So for the rocks layer, I want to turn off use lights and I want to go down to my material properties and I'm gonna change this test material to rocks. We're gonna leave a black stroke, but I want the radius of that to be a little bit thinner. So let's just choose eight. And that looks about right to me. For the fill, however, I need to get my color palette set up. So I'm going to select my scene content selection here and just turn that collection back on for a moment. Then I go back to my layout mode temporarily and I'm going to press Shift A, another image reference. And this time I'm gonna bring in this color palette. Oops, see what happened there? I forgot to be in front of the graphics and my color palette's all wonky. I'm just gonna delete that and I'll snap into front of the graphic. Then I'll add in my reference color palette, like so. I got this from a very helpful person on Tumblr. The link is in the description. Really great um, Hollow Knight color palette. So thank you for that. I'm just gonna scale this down and I'm just gonna pop it just in the top right for now. And when we go back to 2D animation mode, you can see that we have this color palette. I can just push it out where I need to. I can then turn off my camera in the viewport visibility to keep things nice and simple for me. Let's select our grease pencil object and go back to draw mode. And we can now start drawing our rocks and lines. I'm going to choose my base color and I'm going to eyedropper. I think I want this birthplace color palette down here and I'm gonna choose this kind of bluish gray like so. Then making sure that I'm on frame one, I'm just gonna start drawing in my rocks. So we'll zoom in here and we'll just start drawing. I'm going to extend some of my rocks past the canvas boundaries. And this is because I'm not 100% sure on how or where I want these layers to be when they're zoomed. I might make them bigger, I might make them smaller. So what I'm gonna do is just extend that past so that I don't have any annoying gaps that I have to fill in later should I choose to make those larger. So you'll notice that as I'm drawing here, we're getting this kind of line where the fill is um, visible because we have a fill applied to this stroke. And if I actually release, you'll see that we get this annoying kind of broken fill here where we haven't closed the shape. If I turn on this close shape or auto merge option up here and continue drawing, however, what it should do is merge those shapes together as we continue drawing. So this can be quite useful. So we'll just continue working in this way. Don't have to worry about releasing the pen because of our auto merge. As long as you click somewhere close to that, as soon as you release, those will connect up. And again, I'm just making sure to extend past the boundaries of the scene a little bit. So here you can see I've actually made a mistake and it's kind of going to be a bit of a pain in the ass to um, see what I'm doing because of the fill. So I can actually just temporarily turn off the fill in my material. And that allows me to see what I need. And because the materials update 
as and when, if I just turn that back on, it will reapply it to all of my shapes. So there's lots of different ways to work depending on what you, as the creator, would like to work like. Now, I'd just like to highlight an issue you may be facing at the moment. You'll see that if I come out of front orthographic view and I start drawing, it might look like I'm still drawing on the same plane, but as I rotate my 3D camera, you'll notice that my stroke is all squiffy screwed around. This is because we have our grease pencil set to draw to the view. What you want to do for this project is set it drawing on the front plane, so that no matter what angle you're drawing at, your, your drawings will be locked to the front plane. You can change this to side, which will always lock it to the side plane, or the top, which will do the same thing. As you can see, it can get quite broken quite quickly, which is why we like to set it to either front or view and then lock yourself to the front or the graphic view. You can also see that here we are drawing according to the origin point of our grease pencil object. You can change to draw uh, according to the 3D cursor, according to a surface or according to another stroke. We are going to leave it on origin for this entire project. So just make sure that those settings are aligned with mine. Okie dokie. We have drawn the base for our rocks, but I'd probably quite like to add a little bit of detail to these. So what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna add um, all the rest of our base shapes. Like if we hide, for example, at the moment, our rocks layer. You can see that we have some kind of moss and plants growing on here, and we also have our little dude down here as well. We're going to add all those in, and then we're going to go add in a little bit of shading onto our rocks as well. Okay, so as you can see, we've drawn our rocks, but we now can't see our reference image. So I'm just going to go to my layout view, and I'm just going to bring that forward in Y space just a little bit so that it's in front of our image. Of course, when we go back to 2D animation view, because it's an orthographic, it will look exactly the same. And once we're done with this, we won't need our reference image anyway, so it doesn't matter that we've moved it slightly. Uh, I am, however, just going to go to my object mode settings here, select this empty and we'll just reduce the opacity down because it's a little bit distracting. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's select our grease pencil object, go back to draw mode. So we're going to add a new layer on top and we'll call this one moss. We will uncheck use lights for now and we'll add a new slot in our material properties. Let's start with the rocks as a base material, create a duplicate of it and then change it to moss. And let's go to our fill color and we'll select a nice green. I can always change this later on, so I'm not too bothered. Let's just choose, oh, perhaps this dark green here looks quite good. Now that we've done that, we need to make sure we're on our moss layer. And as you can see, we can just start coming in and wherever we've got some moss on our sketches, we can just start drawing in some detailed moss. Now that looks pretty good to me, however, at the moment, it looks too uniform in color, okay? Now, we could create new materials and we're gonna do so because we'll need this later on. So we can create a new slot. In that slot, we'll put a new moss material, we'll duplicate that, we'll just call this, say, moss dark. And we'll just select a darker moss. That one looks quite nice. So we can create that darker moss and then we can just come in. Let's turn off auto merge for this one. And we can just start drawing some darker moss patches and that's completely valid. Okay, definitely a valid way of working, but as you can see, it might, if you want a lot of variation, take a lot of time to get those details in there. So instead, what we're going to do is we're gonna come up here to our tint brush and we're gonna set the tint mode to only affect fills. 0.8 strength seems fine to me. And we're just gonna add a black color on top of that. We could even go like to a very darkish black green here. Then if you just start painting, you'll notice you can affect all of your stuff really quickly. We only, however, want it to affect the moss layer, not all the rocks. So we're just going to lock that moss, that rock layer away. And you can just drag gently over your moss a couple of times. As you can see, it's gonna start adding a load of variation to your color straight away. So what I like to do is have one or two materials and then use a tint to affect that. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go through now and I'm just going to very quickly add the rest of the moss to the scene that we can see on our sketch layer here. So we'll go back to our brush tool, making sure we're in draw mode with moss selected. And we're just gonna go through and add in all of our extra moss. Okay, that's looking really nice. I'm quite happy with that. I'm just gonna temporarily turn off my reference image here, and I'm gonna start looking at creating some simple vector shading for these rocks. So let's go down to our layers palette, and we're gonna add in a new layer here, and we'll just call this rocks shading. We'll turn off use lights for now, and we can go down to our material properties, and I'm gonna add in a new material, and we're just gonna call this material shadow. Now this material is only gonna have a fill and it's gonna be a black fill. Now I'm just gonna go back to the rock shading and with my brush tool here, 
we're just going to add in a basic uh, bit of shadow. So I know that the light's all coming from the center of my scene. So I'm just going to come down to this rock and I'm just going to draw in just a little bit of a shadow here. You can see at the moment, A, it's perfectly solid black and B, it's not clipping to the edge of my rocks. So if we turn on masking layer here and we add a new layer special and we choose rocks, that's going to clip that shadow to the, only the rocks layer. So to make this see-through for the shadows, you could of course just reduce your opacity down, which is what I'm going to do to about 25, but I'm going to swap to multiply as well. So that it lets through any color if there is, um, if we change it to sort of not pure black later on, maybe black with a little bit of blue. You can do the same thing with your highlights as well. So if we add in a new layer and we call this one rocks um, lights, we can leave this on regular. Obviously we'll turn down that opacity and we'll add in a new material and we'll call this one light and we'll change this fill to be white. In fact, we'll add a little bit of blue. Then we do the exact same thing that we did before. We go to our layers palette, go to rocks light, turn on masks and say, I want to use the rocks as my mask layer. Then we can just come in and we can start painting in some highlights on our rocks. You can see, however, that it's not, first of all, looking very good because we need to really reduce the opacity down. Let's change regular to add and reduce the opacity down a little bit of that as well. And to this layer as well on this mask, we'll also add moss. And we will pop our rocks light layer above our moss layer. And that means that our lights here will also apply to our moss layer too. If you want to, you can pop rocks shading above moss too and add the moss layer to that so that it applies to any of the uh, shadows as well. That's looking pretty okay. I can tweak this until I'm happy. So we'll just go through and we'll add that to the rest of our shapes as well. Okay, so here we have our rocks layer, our moss, our shading, and our light all applied to our rocks. The only other thing we need to add is this little critter down here. So we'll make a new layer called critter. And for now, again, we'll be turning off lights. I think I can use the rocks material for his shell, but I'd like a lighter one for his face. So we'll add in a new material slot here. We will take the rocks material, duplicate it, and we'll call this critter. And I'm just going to grab a lighter stone color and we'll use that to draw this guy in. I'm also going to need, as well as a black line work, I'm also going to need a black solid as well for his arms and legs. I could use the shadow material, but that gets risky because if I want to adjust the shadows later on, uh, I would accidentally adjust his legs too. So I'll need another material and we'll call this one black solid. And that's just gonna have a line and a fill that is black. Back on my little critter layer. I've drawn his shell using the rocks and then I will just take my black by itself, which just for neatness's sake, I'll rename to just line. And I'll use that to draw in these details here so that we don't get any weird clipping issues. There, that looks much nicer. There we go. And that is one layer of our animation done. So I'm going to hide in both render and viewport my reference layer because this is now finished. So let's look at that in our layout mode. You can see now that we have this finished layer drawn here and I'm just going to twirl up my selection. I'll turn on my camera and turn off my reference image and let's just make everything else visible. Looking through our camera, we can see now, or start to see now, how this scene is going to look. If we grab our camera and we push it back and forth in Y space, we can start to see how this is gonna be affected by our scene. So I'm just gonna go through now and do all of the other static layers in exactly the same way that I just did. Shall we please know that if I'm now in the grease pencil object for a different reference image here, so this is for mid-ground two, um, it'll look like all your materials are gone, but they are still obviously available in the drop down here. So you can just reselect the ones that you want. And then you can, of course, adjust with the tint in order to change the color, or you can create new materials that are brighter or darker. It's completely up to you. There is, however, one thing that should be worthy of note before we carry on. Um, if we say, for example, take this foreground, the very foreground element, and we go to 2D animation, and uh, we want to draw our stroke. So we go to our grease pencil object, we go to draw mode, we have our material rocks brush selected, 
and we zoom in and you'll notice that obviously the line thickness is way too thick for this uh, frame. If I come in and I just finish off these rocks, and it's beautiful I know, uh, and we go into object mode and look through our camera, you'll notice of course this is way way chunkier than the line work on our other layer. Now this may not be an issue for you, you may like it chunkier close to the screen. The one way to resolve this is to do all of your drawing before you push your objects through into 3D space, so right at the beginning of the tutorial, which is probably what I should have done. Um, but let's leave this mistake in because, you know, we might be making mistakes when we're making our animations. So to fix that, you can uh, do one of two things. You can, of course, just draw on a lower resolution brush, or if you've done a whole bunch of drawing, you're like, oh God, what do I do now? You can fix it uh, post drawing. So for example, if we go to the layer that has the drawing on it, in your grease pencil properties and you can go to your layer properties here select the layer that you want and down in strokes you can twirl that down and you can see here you have some options you can have stroke thickness according to world space switching to screen space might fix that for you it doesn't for me so i'm going to leave it on world space and then we can adjust just the thickness scale and that will adjust the scale of every single line on that layer so here i can bring it down until it's of a similar thickness Something like, I think, 0.3 works well for me. And now you can see that they are of a similar line work. However, it will still retain the fact that as it gets closer to the camera, it will increase in thickness slightly. So you're still getting some of that perspective, which is nice. But I'll leave that mistake in because we're all bound to make it um, and hopefully it'll be useful if I do. Right, back to drawing. Okay then, and there you have it. So as you can see, I've now got all of my layers drawn with at least the basics of my backgrounds done. I may come back and tweak these uh, later on. If we look through our camera, again with numpad zero, and select our camera, we can move it along the Y axis to start to see how this is gonna come together. All of our layers respective to their camera depth moving in animation. But it's a little bit boring at the moment because nothing is moving. So what we're going to do is next episode, we'll be coming back and adding some animation to our characters that will be releasing in one week's time on the 4th of July, 2022. So make sure that you have rung the notification bell, subscribe to the channel and left your comments below with any questions you might have from this first part. And I look forward to welcoming you back next week for the animation. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. There's plenty more like this on the channel if you're interested and I'll see you next time on Tip Tut. Massive thank yous to my level two and above members without whom Tip Tut would have died a long time ago. I know I say it every week, but that's because every week it is true. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember to subscribe.
subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.